Hi, and welcome everyone. I'm Christine Fisher, your host of this edition of Cape Ann Art Waves, coming to you by way of 1623 Studios in Gloucester, Massachusetts. My fellow co-producer, Jacqueline Gannam DeFalco, will be your host next time. Our program is all about meeting and learning from engaging artists and makers. And today I'm so excited to bring to the fore the multi-talented adventurous Sarah Milton. Sarah wears many hats. She does so much to support the members in the greater Cape Ann community as the collections and exhibitions manager at the Rockport Art Association and Museum. She received her bachelor's in fine arts from Montserrat College here in Beverly, Massachusetts, and later earned her master's in museum studies at Harvard. So no grass grows under her feet. <laughs> Sarah has figured out a way to carve out a creative career, which honestly is very challenging. And at the same time, contribute in such a magnificent way to some incredible projects. And I've got to share a few of these because they really reflect what a multi dimensional talent she is. In 2007 to 2008, she was an in painter and assisted with the conservation and preservation of historic stage scenery from vaudeville for curtains without borders in Vermont. I mean, how cool is that? In 2009, she was selected as the Bowery Gallery's Invitational Artist and had her first solo exhibition in New York City. In 2013, and this is my favorite, she painted a mural for the Boston Fire Department inside Engine, <coughs> excuse me, 41, Ladder 14 in Arlington, Massachusetts, to bring joy and relief to the firemen and women who are on the front lines. Most recently for the Harvard Museum of the Ancient Near East in 2018, she developed a system for painting stones, re reproductions and with consideration of colors, materials and the environment. And this is for the exhibition from stone to silicon. So all this from somebody who thought she'd never leave Vermont if it wasn't for Mr. Eddie. <laughs> We're gonna learn more about that. Welcome, Sarah. I'm so glad to have you. <laughs> Hi, Christine. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're so welcome. Uh, let's dig right into it. Let's talk about your journey and, and honestly how you got to where you are. Um, I've always been an artist. Mm -hmm. I, I've been creating as far back as I can remember. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it started with me just doodling um, like parrots and dragons and then <laughs> Going on to high school, Mr. Eddie, Mr. Marshall Eddie was my high school art teacher in Middlebury, Vermont, and he is the reason, one of the reasons why I'm here today, I'm um, living such a creative life. Mm -hmm. I give him full credit. He uh, gave me a list of 10 art schools um, and encouraged me to pick three to look at. Mm -hmm. And so my mother, my grandmother and I packed into a car. Mm -hmm. We did a sort of a mini road trip around New England and we checked out Portland Museum of Art, the museum school in Montserrat College. Mm -hmm. And I ended up at Montserrat. And um, that is where I sort of learned uh, more about the history of art, was introduced to new materials and methods, printmaking. Um, abstract painting mm -hmm. and uh, where I started to really explore and find my voice as an artist. Mm -hmm. Great. So I'm looking at these beautiful paintings behind you and it kind of triggers me to ask you, how would you describe your work? Talk to us about that. My work is, uh, it's abstract, mm -hmm. but it does come from life. So I tend to pick and choose from what's there. And I've always had a thing for old barns, abandoned buildings, rundown schools, um, sort of going places where I shouldn't go, uh, <laughs> where no one should actually really go. It's the yellow tape, you know, um, but it's that sense of an adventure and finding beauty and what's been left behind and neglected, mm -hmm. but what was once thriving. So I explore this idea of the presence of absence. And um, so my work is more about the shapes and the colors and, um, you know, positive negatives mm -hmm. um, spaces. And so I've had a chance to just grow and explore that. 
Mm-hmm. Well, right. I'm really enjoying the, the work right behind you. I, I think that's a, a great summary. And we have two more pieces that we want to focus on to help kind of tell your story here. The first one is Constitution, which is an oil painting. Do you want to sh- talk to us about that? Absolutely. So this piece, um, I was able to uh, sell three paintings in 2003, my senior year at Montserrat Mm -hmm. College and travel the United States for a year with friends and painting along the way. And um, this is a painting based off from an abandoned uh, gas station in Nevada Mm -hmm. that I uh, created. And it's the idea, yeah, again, of the presence of absence, working with the void, and um, exploring architectural shapes and light and landscape. Mm-hmm. And to some, it's very abstract to me. It, it really represents how I feel in my experience with that space. Mm-hmm. I love it. Uh, talk to us also about Tribute to Turquoise. I love the, the title of this, Tribute to Turquoise. It makes me very curious. Uh, uh, it's my favorite color. And so I realized that I had never done a painting on my favorite color. So um, that sort of, it's an honor to turquoise and to the blues of the world. Um, and I was able to, this is a later piece or more current. It's, um, it's a collage on paper. So it involves oil, paint, etching, ink, mixed media collage, as where the piece that we just saw um, was strictly oil on canvas. So I, my process has been growing. You know, I have went from traditional oil paint on canvas mm-hmm. um, to now I'm exploring multiple media in a variety of ways. Mm, I like that evolution. You have such a unique story with respect to your inspirations. And uh, I'd love for you to talk about kind of the duality in terms of your sources of inspiration. (laughs) So my largest inspiration at this time is fly fishing. (laughs) I light up just when I think about it. (laughs) I... I, it's taken me to places in my life and in my creative career uh, that I could have never imagined. Uh, I moved to Rockport, Massachusetts, you know, about a little over three years ago. And I had the fortune to learn how to fly fish from uh, Skip Montello, who's a local photographer and also a avid fly fisherman. And he taught me all about, uh, you know, casting and I've been learning about tying flies um, and of course that's encouraging me to, um, you know, work three dimensionally, but also to utilize photography, which is something I haven't ever done. So it's, just, it's inspiring me to work in different ways. Mm-hmm. And um, that's pretty remarkable. That's pretty, that's pretty wonderful, especially when the two intersect, right? Your love for creating art and your love for, fly fishing and how they both kind of influence each other as, as you've heard me say before to me it's it's all about poetry right it is <laughs> absolutely and they feed into each other you know yeah. even my flies are starting to look like my paintings and vice versa they're both both mediums are colorful and textual and yeah um, yeah well, there's two pieces Sarah that we want to talk about here um the 15th of April Talk to us about that and how that how that has inspired you or where the inspiration came from. Uh, this piece is actually inspired from the Boston bombings. It's not a positive thing, but I was working about three miles away when that happened. And I remember just the, I had to get these feelings out. Mm-hmm. Um, and so this is a reflection of what, how I responded to that event. Mm-hmm. Um, and being so close to it mm-hmm. and you know feeling very fractured and kind of confused at time and i think that this piece is successful in documenting you know my experience around that event mm-hmm. and um, also it carries through the multiple media you know working with uh, scrap paper etching ink oil paint um, and a bunch of different materials, adhesives. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. How great that you could release your feelings, you know, in that way. That was such a, a poignant period of time for all of us, right, here in Boston. Right. 
Um, let's talk about another piece, which kind of brings us back, right, to your love and passion for fly fishing, largemouth bass splash. This piece is so fun. This is something I created this past week. Um, it's as new as it gets. It's me exploring photography. So when I'm fly fishing, I catch and release all different fish, mostly striped bass. But in this case, it was a largemouth bass out of Maine. And I record them with my phone with them um, catch and release videos. Mm -hmm. And this past week, I was sort of going through my videos and doing film stills. And these splash scenes kept coming up. And I thought, gosh, they're wonderful. And so I started just uh, sort of um, capturing those little splash moments when a fish is taking off and getting away. And I realized how exciting these images are. They just are full of movement, but also they reflect the, you know, the colors of the skies and the landscapes around them. And so I'm actually going to use them to create a new body of paintings. Ah. Um, so it's, I haven't shared this with anyone, so, but it was a very exciting journey in this time. And it's a way for um, my art and my fly fishing to come together. Yeah, it sure is. I think it's a marvelous piece. It's just so full of movement and rhythm. And that's a beautiful tee up to this next conversation point. We wanna talk about the work that you've been doing because you have been you know, very busy over the last night or so months creating work. It's been a very, challenging time for you personally, right? And for all of us um, and complex. And yet it's also been a very fertile time for you too. And I, I wanna read a quote, something that you shared with me about the, the, uh, your art practice and what it means to you. My art practice means everything to me. When life changes and the unexpected happens, my artwork is still there for me. It's one of the consistencies in my life or maybe the only one. So let's let's jump off and talk about this period of time. Um, it's true. Um, as, as life changes, it's um, you know we lose people we love in every way possible, um, and then also jobs change. We move. You know, everything is constantly shifting around us, but the only thing that seems to stay consistent is my uh, love of art mm -hmm. and fishing, you know, but they are, they're consistent and they're two things that can go with me wherever I go. And is, even as people come and go and everything changes, um, those two outlets are still there. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, been wonderful. I mean, it, it's part of my development and who I am. Mm -hmm. And um, it also brings both communities, bring people together, the arts mm -hmm. and fishing. That's right. That's right. And you have embarked on creating, you know, a whole new body of work. And I'd like to use a piece to talk about that. You mentioned just a minute ago that you've embarked using photography. Let's talk about bandit bait, bait fish, which is a mixed media piece. <laughs> This is one of my artificial flies that I've um, created. It's actually the first one I sort of designed and created myself. It's of a rodent pattern, you know, sort of like a mouse or a, I don't know, I guess it'd be a dwarf raccoon. I don't know if those actually exist, but <laughs> I just imagine a raccoon being three inches small, um, you know, to use for fishing. And in that little one um, is made up of like rabbit and, uh, feathers, but also, you know, adhesives and thread with a hook. And so it still allows me to explore different materials like I do in my mixed media collages, um, but in a three-dimensional way. And working three-dimensional is so new for me. I have to remember look every way. And then it goes even beyond that where these pieces have to be functional in the water and out of the water. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's really about having to explore methods and materials in new ways. Mm -hmm. Yes, you seem to like that. You, you like to uh, really venture kind of outside of known boundaries. Yes. Right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love that about you. I mean, you're all about growth. You know, I mean, honestly, every artist that I've had the pleasure to interview for Cape Ann Art Waves, 
Um, you know, we, we all talk at one point in time about being brave, about stepping outside of our box. And it takes courage to do that. And I, I love how you have evolved here. And at the same time, using your practice for healing, right? During this transformational time for you, I would say. Absolutely. I, I think um, having an opportunity for growth is the most important one. Um, you know, being able to take risks, um, being able to accept failures and forgive and move on, you know, forgiving yourself. Um, <laughs> and also just uh, becoming an excellent problem solver. I mean, when it comes to art, like you said earlier, we, you know, it makes us into problem solvers. And um, I think that's my favorite part. You know, if I'm ever too comfortable in my work, I'm uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. I think it's really important to continue to push boundaries and grow. Yeah. And see what's possible. I love that about you. And, and on that note, that's a perfect segue, Sarah. You've led us right into your process. So share with us some of your nuggets around what you do. Well, I spend most of my time in my studio. It's now my fly tying studio slash painting studio mm -hmm. slash collage place. It's a creative space for me. Mm -hmm. And my process involves just sort of getting started. Sometimes I'll take leftover paint from my palette and just get it right on the canvas. It's using leftover paint and it's covering a white surface. So I don't feel intimidated to move forward. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes it's just about pulling out what needs to come out of a work of art you know for letting it speak for itself yeah and um you know sometimes i'm using my fly fishing feathers to paint with and sometimes i'm putting my feathers in my paintings and um just being open to the process and the journey of um art and discovery mm -hmm. and um just making sure that I'm always pushing those boundaries. I don't want to create the same thing over and over. I, I have sometimes, you know, three to six pieces going and I just want to um, make sure that every single one of them is different because for me that shows growth and uh, courage. It does, absolutely. And you're giving yourself permission to kind of lean into that. You know, you kind of have to fall backwards a little bit. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's one way of talking about it. So Sarah, where can we find your work? Oh, I exhibit at the Rockport Art Association Museum. And then also um, once in a while, I have work on display uh, at Hall Space Gallery in Dorchester. Yeah. Um, this past year, I was um, an artist that went in painted at the Manship property, which was wonderful. It was a hidden treasure. And they're working on an online exhibit. So I'll have a piece in that. I'm not exactly sure when that airs, but I'll make sure I, I'll let everybody know. <laughs> and um, my website, my artist website is um, Sarah with an H, llmilton.com. Excellent, Sarah. Well, what a treat to have you. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's really, really fun. I think for all of our listeners, you know, they've got such a broader understanding of really who you are. You've always been so consistently upbeat at the Rockport Art Association and Museum. You're such a stabilizing force. And I just have loved learning more about you. So thank you for sharing your story with us. Sarah Milton, everybody. <laughs> I'm Christine Fisher. Thanks so much for listening. I want to say also for our listeners that you can access this recording on 1623 studio social media platform to include YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and channel 12. So happy holidays, guys. Until next time. <laughs>